Right. Conventional shaped charges are filled with high explosive in a factory. Right. Um, this is something that um, I designed for filling by the user. It means that it can travel on aeroplanes and so on without DIY its DIY shaped charges, Exactly that. Now, in this case, um, we're going to go back to probably the first uh, type of liner, this is called the liner, that was used in a shaped charge. That's just a cone of copper, isn't it? It is indeed. And then having that copper on there, I guess it's the, the, the sort of the equivalent of using um, a bullet or a cannonball. So the same, you know, <laughs> if, you, if you go and just fire an, an, an empty kind of cartridge, then you get a, a loud bang and an explosion, but nothing that's going to do any significant harm. Whereas if you put yeah. a, 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 like a bullet in the end of it, if you see what I mean, and fire it, then it pushes out something of a significant mass and that can do some, some damage. Yes. The great advantage is that this metal travels enormously faster than any cannonball. I'll show you what I mean. If you put plastic explosive in here and then you push this copper cone into the explosive, when I initiate at this end, a detonation wave travels from here to there. Right. First thing it hits is the apex of the cone. And that apex of the cone is driven forward. The whole cone is collapsed. In fact, it, it collapses in such a way that it turns inside out. Right, because the end bit's hit first and that starts moving. Wow, that's, that's... an astonishing thing to get your head around, though. <laughs> right. It is a, very, a bit of a shock at first. What happens is that the inner part of the copper, not the whole, the whole mass of it by any means, the inner part of the copper um, forms into a sort of wire, which is called a jet. And that's not molten, it's, a, it's, a, it's still solid copper. Yes, but coming not in that direction, coming in that direction. Of course, yes. Counterintuitive. And then that almost like piles in like a nail through the steel driving its way in. Yes, it pushes the target material out of the way and, and it pushes it aside as the tip of the jet hits the steel yep. and flows back along the outside of the rod. Then there's a new increment of metal. It is constantly being replaced. When it's all used up, it stops, won't go any deeper. Yes. Are we in any kind of position that we can try this and I can oh, see... Oh, absolutely. This box, I'm pleased to tell you, is full of explosive. <laughs> what I'll do is take some out. This is um, standard British plastic explosive. It's uh, similar to the American C4, but it is actually much easier to use for filling charges. You can just ram it in and then put, put the cone in. We're going to test it with what looks like an impossibly solid block of steel. There is a critical distance at which the jet will be at its most penetrating before it breaks up, so the charge has legs to hold it the right height from our target. Right. See you in about two minutes. Yes, and don't panic. I won't. Firing. Four. Three, two, one. Wow. Go and see what we've done, Troy. It seems astonishing because that, that's such a massive thump that yeah. something extremely accurate will have occurred from that. Well, let's see. Ooh. <laughs> well, it's gone in at least that deep because I can push that in. But then the proof of the pudding will be turning it over and see if we have achieved anything the other end. Yep. Oh, yes. <laughs> but that's gone through over a foot of steel. The thing that oh, yeah. I find it even more surprising is you know full well if you've got a copper nail like that, no matter how hard you hit it, <laughs> yeah. it's, it's not, it's not even going to hardly dent. dent the steel. Exactly. Yeah. Yet, yeah. you know, you get... Um, a good amount of plastic explosives with a nice shape behind it and you can drive it the whole way through. <laughs>